so now let's look at it. I have it up here um, on the computer and I went to um, Food Tracker and put it in and then I went over to my reports and I did the all reports. Oh, nutrient report. Looks like here. a fun site. I'm anxious to try it out. Yes, it is. And the nutrient reports here. So um, this is the printout right here of what I found online. And it tells you whether you were okay, under, or over for the different nutrients. And it goes through the calories, the carbohydrates, it goes through fats, and then most of our vitamins and minerals. Oh wow, this is really informative. So can you look at this and can you tell me what you see from this as far as your diet? Is it good? Is it under? Is it over? Well, not a surprise. I think I'm, I mean, I, I know it says okay for protein, but it looks like I'm eating quite a bit. Um, my fiber is, looks like it's a concern. Concern for over? Or that I'm not getting enough. Okay. See, I think I'm eating enough whole grains, but I'm not really sure I'm choosing what's really a whole grain. All right. Um, the sodium um, has me a, a little, I, I, I tend to eat some processed food. Sometimes I have a long ride and I'll eat some chips or some crackers, and I think that's where the sodium maybe is coming from. And I think I need more calcium. Because I know that I, I've had relatives that have problems with bone density, and I'm not a big milk drinker. That probably should have told you this is another concern. Sometimes it upsets my stomach, so I think I need to look for ways to get more calcium. Okay, let me just check these here. So you were concerned about the fiber, and you were concerned about the calcium. And what was the other thing you were concerned about? Here? Oh, oh I was protein. concerned about my protein. Seems like that's a lot. Okay, so so far that those are concerns. Which I didn't even realize. Mm -hmm. um, as you look down here from the minerals, do you see any other concerns? Yeah, I'm su yeah I'm su I know that red meat is a good source of iron, but I'm a little bit under. Mm -hmm. Okay, so maybe we can look at sources for that also. And yeah, I see the magnesium is a little little low as well. Right. I hear a lot about that in the media lately. I did hear that it's a, chocolate is a source, so I've been using that as an excuse to eat chocolate. I do that too. Okay, just a little bit. <laughs> yes. Okay. Oh, now that folate I have heard of because there's a lot of um, so women of childbearing age and everybody in general not getting enough, and I see I'm low. Okay, yes. All right, so we have a few things to look at, and luckily on this program, um, for Super Tracker or in My Diet Analysis, we can actually go to the food groups and we can find out information on those. So one of the things we want to do first is to look at fiber. Okay? Uh, well, actually protein, that was the first thing that you noted. So let's go to protein and look at different sources of that. Um, would you consider more plant protein because you said you wanted to get away from yeah. red meat? Yeah, you know, I've tried to cook with some of the alternative meats and tofu, and I feel like I just have to get a little bit more creative with it. Okay. I've had it, like at restaurants, and I do enjoy it. Right, so what we can do is we can search and we can find different ways for you to get more plant protein in your diet. Um, I have um, a chart on here that's going to show you how you can actually combine different plant proteins so that it's as good for you as having an animal protein. Oh, is that like when you eat rice and beans together? Exactly. What my mother used to call poor man's protein. Yes, that's it. So this chart can show you a lot of the different foods that you can use. Um, and then one of the things that a lot of people, you've probably heard of this or you've even used it, um, have been really into in the last few years is a grain called quinoa. Oh yes, I've tried it. Yeah, I love it. Um, and there's all sorts of different things you can do with it. You can put vegetables in it, you know, it really increase your fiber that way. So that would really address two needs. It would, right. So 
this is how you can combine foods in order to get more of your plant proteins. But you want to do that combination of foods. I know I, you know, I'll watch maybe Dr. Oz or the doctors, and they talk a lot about a plant-based diet. So I've kind of been thinking about that. So this is coming along at a good time for me. Great. Okay. So we can boost your. Uh, I'm actually we we don't want to boost your protein. We want to you know not have quite as much. So we want to decrease some of that meat. So when you're having meat, you know, really try to keep it to the palm of your hand. And instead of having it one of those days a week, what do you think? Could you possibly have the plant protein for one um, of those? I would definitely be willing to try that because okay. I do enjoy a lot of that stuff. It's just, you know, it gets to be habit. Right. And I think I need to kind of just be a little more open to my choices. And sometimes families dictate that also. Yeah. So, you know, I know a lot of people, including myself, um, my husband tends to like the red meat more, and so I have to try to gradually wean them off it as well. <laughs> um, okay, so we've got the protein. Um, let's look at fiber also, because you kind of knew that you were going to be a little bit low in it, but you were surprised at how low you were. Yeah, um, I guess maybe just having one slice of whole, one or two slices of whole wheat bread really isn't meeting fiber needs. I heard, are beans a good source? Because I did hear that. Yes, they are. They're a very good source. Um, if you have a serving of beans, that can be three to four, even more times as much fiber wow. as, say, one slice of whole, whole wheat toast. You know, I think of beans as well. In the summertime, you have baked beans, but right. they can be used in a lot of different oh, ways. Oh, a lot of different ways. And right here, if we go over here to this side, we can see that this whole list, look at all of these foods that have fiber in them. And over on this side, you can see the amount of fiber that they have. Wow. So do you like these foods? Um, yeah, I mean, I, I do like black bean soup and things like that. I just, you know. What do you think, besides soup, what else could you add your beans to? A uh, salad? I mean, like chickpeas in a salad. Um, I've had that like if I'm at a salad bar. I oh, really yeah. enjoy that. I don't know why I don't do it at home. Mm -hmm. um, do you see anything else from this list that you could add to a salad besides your vegetables? Um, vegetables, beans. Um, do you like seeds and nuts? Oh yeah, I love to. I I put walnuts in a salad before. I never. Even, yeah, that that's that's a good source of fiber. It is. Oh, it is, and it's also a good fat. Okay, so yeah, I always worried about eating nuts because I have so many calories. Right, they do. You have to you have to make sure you limit it. But if you look here, you want to have the monounsaturated yeah. and the polyunsaturated. And those are good sources. I'm, I mean, I know I'm getting off track. I know there, there's a lot about trans fats, and I have been trying to limit processed foods because I know that's trans fat, mm -hmm. sodium, all can contribute to my issues. Okay, so do you have any questions so far? Yeah, I think I want. I just, um, I think this site is going to be fun to go review in more detail mm -hmm. to put some meals together. Okay, great. Now let's look at your calcium. Um, you said that sometimes milk makes your stomach yeah, upset. Yeah, and I know that's not that unusual for people. Right, it's not. Um, but there are substitutes. You don't have to have just milk. Um, do you know of any milk substitutes that you could have? Well, I've heard green leafy vegetables have some minerals. They do. One of them may be calcium, I don't know. Mm -hmm. Some of them do. Um, do you eat any cheese or yogurt? Um, yogurt. Um, I try to stay away from the cheese because it has so much fat in it, saturated okay. fat. And there are, that's very true. Um, there are some that are lower fat than others, if you're interested, but we can stay away from those. If you like yogurt, that's a good source. Some of your green leafy vegetables also. Um, you even have some other sources here. So let's see if we can find some. Well, um, I have tried um, some of the alternative milks because I actually do like the taste of them. I was drinking chocolate milk, but I, chocolate soy milk, that was a little bit too much uh, sugar. But uh, almond milk I enjoy and mm -hmm. it is, um, it has to have calcium added to it. Right, right. So I probably should focus a little bit more on that. Right. And that's a good point because there are foods that are fortified with calcium, meaning that it's been added to them. Um, some people like orange juice, as you had noted. Oh, yeah. And 
the ones usually with the blue cap have calcium. Added. Oh, really? Right. Oh, that makes it easy to find. So it. it's easy. Um, so there well, are that things that good. you can do without drinking milk. And let's see, the iron, um, you know, a lot of women just tend to not eat quite enough foods with iron and women need more iron in childbearing years. So we'll look at some other foods here again. Um, unfortunately, the, the foods that are the highest are your red meats and your organ meats, but you want to stay away from as much of those as possible. So there's a whole list here of um, vegetables. Okay. that are high in yeah. iron. I think it really, I just have to be a little bit more creative and not eat the same old foods that I'm just That's doing all the time. That's a great idea. Right. And the other thing is, is that sometimes there's, there's some little tricks also. One of the tricks is, is that when you're eating uh, vegetables that have a lot of iron in them, if you have vitamin C at the same time, then it enhances your oh, body's really? ability to absorb that iron. Well, that seems like that would be important for women. Yes. Yes. Um, so, you know, you need enough. So just a little tiny squeeze of a lemon probably isn't going to work, mm -hmm. but a little bit more, or if you, you know, tend to have something along the same lines, like your orange juice or whatever, then it can really enhance that absorption. Um, That's a great idea. And then the magnesium you talked about, again, just increasing those vegetables, those green leafy vegetables especially, and that's going to help also with your folate. Oh, yeah. What, I mean, what are good sources of folate? I mean, is it mainly vegetables? Well, one of the things that I was told years ago, at which I've always remembered, is that one of the ways to remember folate is folate and foliage. Mm. Okay? So any of your deep green leafy vegetables are good sources, but also comes from orange juice, asparagus, um, all sorts of them. So there's a lot of good sources of folate. And again, if you want, you can go on here and find a whole list of them. Yeah, it seems like it has a lot of good supported material in there. Yes, it does. And it takes a while to navigate through, but, but there is a lot of good material. So do you have any concerns about this? Do you think we've answered any of your questions? No, I, I, have, um, I, have some, I have some good ideas that now from reviewing this. Okay, so can you tell me some of the changes that you would like to make? Well, I think I would like to try to um, incorporate more plant-based proteins and cut the, which will help me cut down on the red meat. Um, and uh, the nuts I thought were such a great idea. Looking at some alternative sources of calcium in green leafy vegetables as well as trying some fortified, is that it fortified? Yes. Um, plant-based milks since I have trouble digesting regular milk. Um, and, you know, with the iron, it seems like a, you know, it seems like a lot of this goes along together. If you do one, it really builds on the next. So increasing the vegetables is gonna lower the calories, increase the fiber, get me more folate, and what do we say, the magnesium, mm -hmm. and cut down on some of the higher fat processed things. Very good. Yeah, I agree completely. What do you think of, I've seen at the supermarket, like they'll have, um, I don't know, they call them smoothies or shakes in the freezer, but I thought about maybe trying to put it together myself, because it looked like it had a lot of sugar in it. And I was yeah. just thinking of like throwing some fruits and vegetables, maybe with some juice in there as a way to kind of boost my fruits and vegetables. That's a very good idea. And a lot of people do that now. And it gives you control over what you want in yes. the smoothie. Yeah. So you can take your own vegetables and fruits and you know, sometimes people even don't like certain vegetables, the taste alone. But when they're mixed into that smoothie, they don't know. And then they're yeah, getting the tastes, they're getting the nutrients yeah. from it. I've had uh, my friend told me she makes one with kale and it ends up coming out tasting like a chocolate milkshake almost mm -hmm. yeah. by adding a dates and so, things, things I've never tried before. I'm anxious to try. Again, we would have to go to another website, um, and I'm going to have to look that one up for you because I don't have it off the top of my head. But there is a good website that does have recipes for things like that. So after oh, we're finished, great. we'll see if we can find that. Great. Okay, Because I find it's always helpful to have a recipe. and it will give you the exact amounts of those different nutrients that you want. All right, so we've completed that portion and we can always come back to it if you need to. 
But the next thing that we want to do is we want to address the fact that on your history, um, <clears throat> where, let's see, where is that history where it was had to do with dental caries? Here it is, right here, this history right here. Um, you had said that in the past um, three years, you have had three new cavities yeah. or caries. Yes, okay. Um, and that you do have, uh, were all of those along the gum line or just? I think one of them was. One of them was, okay. And you do have a little bit of gum recession. Yeah, a little bit of sensitivity. And sensitivity, okay. And that you um, brush your teeth daily, but floss not daily, it says. No, once a week, a couple times a week. Okay. If I get something popcorn stuck in my teeth. Okay. And you really should do it pretty much every day, right? That's what's recommended, yes. And in just a minute, we'll go over why that's important. But right now, we'll just keep going through this and see if we can figure out, you know, perhaps what might be causing or at least contributing to these cavities. Um, it says that you do use a mouthwash, and it says Listerine. Yeah. Okay. And let me just tell you that some mouthwashes are better than others to use. And if you have gingival recession, and you also have what says down here, sometimes dry mouth. Oh yeah, occasionally I do feel like my mouth's a little dry. Right, then you have to be careful about the type of Listerine that you use because some of them are very strong. Have you oh, noticed that? Oh yes, I, can, I have trouble holding it in my mouth for the recommended time. Right, and they contain alcohol, which is drying. Oh. Whereas there are, actually Listerine has some that do not contain alcohol, and your other products do also. So we have to look at that and see which ones would be best for you. So again, label reading for this, like I should be doing at the supermarket. E excellent. Yes, that, that's what we want to do. Um, and everything else, let's see, foods that, that you think might contribute to the caries, the high, the high sugary foods are um, chips and do you mean potato chips or do you mean or like tortilla more tortilla chips okay and Ritz bits yeah mm -hmm. something like that I can keep in the car mm -hmm. yeah, as a quick snack um, licorice yeah that's unfortunately is kept in my house most of the time okay and um, ice cream which you said for dessert um, yeah I'm kind of like a little something sweet after dinner at night mm -hmm. probably okay. a bad habit I've gotten into Okay, so we'll we'll look through and we'll see actually where these fall and see if perhaps they are contributing to that. So um, what we need to do then is I need to show you this chart. And what this is going to do is it's going to show you exactly how cavities form, okay? Before I, before I talk about it, you know, when you look at this, what can you tell me? Does, does it make sense to you? Um, yeah, it seems like the amount of starchy and sugary things you have and interact with the bacteria in your mouth, which I guess it's important to watch those foods as well as brushing and flossing. They kind of work together. Right, right. That's exactly it. So we have this, this chart here, and it just tells us that when you have bacteria in your mouth, which we also call dental plaque, dental biofilm, Okay, that's oh, yeah, my hygienist said that. Right. Um, and then we also have these, what we call the fermentable carbohydrates, the carbohydrates that will break down in your mouth, okay, which are things that you just talked about. Um, and we have teeth, which we have, okay, then we can have cavities over time. Because over time, what happens is that those bacteria take these carbohydrates and they utilize those for food and then they create acids. Oh. And acids are strong, you know I mean? They would burn you. And even though enamel is the hardest substance in your body, over time, those acids will eat through it and they will demineralize it and break it down and then a cavity can form. So me eating those starches as I'm driving for an hour every day or maybe a hard candy or a gummy candy like licorice doing it more frequently is right. It's almost as important as the amount you eat. It's it's actually more important. Oh. Okay. And also whether it's between meals, 
or with meals. Because if you have a sugary food or a starchy food with a meal, and that's a meal that has, has to have both protein and fat with it, okay, then that ten, the protein and the fat tend to be protected. So we don't worry about it so much during meals. So when you have your ice cream right after your meal, unless it's an hour later, but if it's really with your meal, and ice cream is pretty fatty too, and it also dissolves quickly in your mouth, we're not as concerned about that as in between when you have the foods that stick in your teeth, like the chips and the Ritz bits and the oh, licorice. Wait, even something like, I like cornflakes, they kind of stick and, in your and mouth And the cornflakes. Right. I never thought of that as being something that would contribute to, to, to cavities. Right. Hmm. So if we look at this chart here, we'll see that um, we have liquids consumed, we have solid sugars and starches, which consists of things like cookies, cakes, and breads. And then we have what we call retentive sugars, all candies, dried fruits. Okay. And dried fruits. That really, I can that see it's high sugar, yeah, right. it's very sticky. Right. So, I mean, they're good for you for fiber, but if we're, you know, what we're trying to control the dental cavities or caries, yeah, then very sweet. it's not. Right. So what happens is, is that we want to put those things in here, and then we're going to add them up, okay? And then we're going to realize that every time that we have one of those in between meals, for approximately 20 minutes, there's acid that's going to be on the teeth. Okay. Now, if they're consumed at the same time, you're not going to count them twice. But if it's separate times, and then you would add that up and figure out for the day how many total you had. Um, there's another chart over here which breaks it down even a little bit better for us in that it shows us that liquids actually are not quite as harmful because they are cleared from our mouth much faster. So they're not hanging around they're not stuck hanging between around. your teeth. Right. So we only give them a point of one. Um, the solid sticky foods we give two points. And then slowly dissolving foods, we give three points because they hang out there longer and they're going to actually create that acid longer. So this chart, what we'll do is we'll circle on your diet all of those foods and put them into these boxes. And then we'll get a score. And then we'll be able to figure out over here whether you are low, moderate, or high risk for carrots. Okay. So we'll go back to your diet. And I would like you to, with this red pen, just circle all of the foods that you think could contribute to your cavities. So the foods that we've talked about, the sugary foods, the carbohydrates like the chips, the Ritz bits, uh, anything like that. Um, would something like juice count? Juice we don't usually count. Um, it can if you have a lot of juice, it can contribute to erosion, okay? But it doesn't really contribute to the cavity, okay? Oh boy, I'm okay. Well, I guess you'll tell me if I've circled all these, right? If I, if I had a sandwich, say with white bread or Italian bread, if that's at the meal, do I still serve? Okay. No, don't need to. Well, it looks like I've got quite a few red circles here. Okay. Well, then let's find out where they go. So put a check mark in either liquid, uh -huh, salad, okay. or slowly dissolving for all of these. And so far, it looks like you're doing a great job here with your circles. Look at the next page. Um, soft drinks, do I only count them if they're sugar, sugary? Yeah, do I? Well, for this purpose, let's count them if they're sugary. But we're going to talk about okay. how 
they can erode your teeth also. Okay, so we've got all of these listed. So then we had two here times one equals two. Okay, and what have we got here? Four times two equals eight. Two and three times three equals nine. So I add those up. Add those up. So I have a score of 19. But now divide by three, because that was three days. So it's a little over six, 6.3. Right. So now let's look up at this score, Ooh. and that puts you into which area? Moderate risk. Okay, so do you want to circle that? Yeah, and it's even kind of tending towards high risk. Right, okay. So what are the what does it say here that you would want to do? Well, I definitely understand about reducing the frequency. Um, I'm thinking really anything sweetened drink, probably try to replace it with water or maybe just a little lemon in water. Mm -hmm. um, I do that, but I just get lazy and grab something. Um, and sometimes I'll keep some of these slowly dissolving mints in my purse, and like I keep uh, crackers in the car. Probably a better thing would be a fruit. But you know, I did have a question okay. where it said bananas here. I do eat a lot of bananas. Okay, lot, that's something I'll keep in my purse along with some of the other things. Well, again. Is it kind of a little bit sticky? It sort is of? a little bit sticky, so it could contribute to it. But sometimes we have to think about the pros and the cons. And bananas are actually a good food for us. So especially when we went back to your uh, diet analysis, you were a little bit low in potassium. Oh, yeah. And bananas are a great source of potassium. Right. And they're a good source of fiber. Okay. So if we want to say, okay, in this case, maybe I'm going to keep my bananas. And definitely kind of get rid of the, the dried foods because I love to go and buy dried mangoes and dried oranges and I eat them in the car and that's probably contributing to this. It could be. Um, it doesn't mean that you can't throw those in your salad. Oh yeah, okay. some walnuts and some dried Things fruit. like that. Yeah. Um, and then of course, you know, hopefully brush your teeth afterwards, rinse with water, et cetera, and then you're going to get rid of hopefully most of that. I do carry a toothbrush. I just, I need to put that into action. Okay. So we have this, um, and it says, you know, again, eat more non-decay promoting foods. Yeah, I mean, you know, I do like raw vegetables, and I just have to, I need to get them cut up and have them more available so that when I'm racing out of the house, I'm not saying, oh, well, I'm going to grab the crackers because they're, they're already prepackaged. That's a very good idea. 